Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 9th of January and the first one of 2022. And I hope everyone's 2022 has started off well. As always, this is useful. Please go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, and share, and hit that bell icon to get notified of new updates. As always, you can jump to a particular update. There's not actually many this week, but in the description and the thumbnails below, you can jump to a certain part of the video. So while Azure was really quiet, I was not. A whole bunch of videos I released. So over the holiday break, I spent about 40 hours creating an AZ900, so the Azure Fundamentals, a full certification course. So this is eight and a half hours long. It's made up of 54 actual distinct lessons. So it's actually a playlist. So if we jump over super quick, I actually broke it down for each of the different skills that they test. So you can watch it as a complete start to finish. Zero adverts as always for all my stuff. It's just there to help you. There's a full handout for the course. So you can just jump over here to this PDF file. And it's basically got the links to each of the individual videos by topic. And then all of the various links I might use and all of the whiteboards I use throughout the entire course. So it's pretty long, um, but that, that's there to help you. So if you are looking to go through the Azure Fundamental stuff, hopefully that would be a useful resource for you. I also then released a video all about the Azure AD account login to a Linux virtual machine running in Azure. Azure AD login to Linux, yes. So I walked through exactly how that works. And then a few little fun videos. So on New Year's Day, I got up at 2 a.m and I did a virtual Everest. That's where you climb 29,029 feet of elevation gain, and you have to do it in one uh, kind of period of time. So it took me 13 and a half hours, um, but I got that done. Then I did kind of a look back on 2021 and looking forward to 2022. And then we had our 90,000 subscriber AMA on Wednesday, which was really, really fun. I did it at different time zones. We had different people joining than regularly, and it was just a great time. So a whole bunch of stuff I've done. On to what Azure did. Um, so Azure Traffic Manager has announced some new probe IPs. Obviously Traffic Manager is that global um, geo distribution system. It can be that point that I can access, it uses DNS, that then can point to services in different Azure regions, on premises, different clouds, whatever that might be. But to check their health, it has to go and probe. Well that probe will come from certain IP addresses. And if you're restricting that inbound flow, if you did it by IP address, there are gonna be some new ones. Now, if you're using Azure Firewall or network security groups and using the Azure Traffic Manager service tag, you don't need to do anything. Service tags are the IP addresses that make up that service. But if you're not doing that and limit it by the specific IPs, make sure you head over. And if you actually go and look at the service tags, I understand why it does work sometimes and not others. I think that probably add, did open up. Let's go and have a look. So, nope, it did not. Okay, we're having technical fun today. Let's try it one more time. There we go, really weird stuff. So if you jump over to the document, it will actually let you go and download the JSON files. So if you go and download the JSON file for Azure Public, then it will go and give you what all those IP addresses are. So if you are doing it by IP address, then make sure you do head over and get those new IPs um, for the, before the 21st of January. Next, um, database side. So there's an Azure SQL database hyperscale tier. Now the hyperscale tier is the idea that we still have that regular primary read, write, compute node, and then secondary read only is. It has a special logging service, but it does this really great scale out feature for page servers, which have their own sets of storage. It's what gives hyperscale this massive amount of scalability. What we now have the ability to do is for the auto failover, we can take the database servers that essentially house Azure SQL database instances. So now the SQL database servers that can include hyperscale databases you would add them into this auto failover group, so they'd be in two different regions, and now those hyperscale instances will be included in certain pieces of functionality. And that's this preview, 
And so in preview, what this is really focused on is the ability to do a failover, i.e. graceful, the primary read write is available, but also a forced failover. Maybe that primary is not available, but there's some risk of data loss. So now I can have that auto failover capability and include as part of that group, um, hyperscale tier databases. So that's in preview right now. Miscellaneous, so Defender for Cloud, i.e. what was Azure Security Center, it's been rebranded Microsoft Defender for Cloud, had their December 2021 update. Let's see if this will open for me. It's doing some really weird stuff today. Look at that. Let's try and go back one more time. There we go. Hello. Um, so if we look at what their updates, the big one here was about Microsoft Defender for Containers. So before this was two separate Defender solutions. It was Defender for Kubernetes, and then we had Defender for Container Registries. So these have essentially now merged together into this Microsoft Defender for Containers. It's also added some additional features around multi-cloud support, host level threat detection, Kubernetes native at scale onboarding. And then they also have new alerts for storage. So we can see there's some new alerts around, hey, publicly accessible storage containers successfully discovered, um, unsuccessfully scanned. Then there are some updates around improvements for some of the alerts and detecting access from a Tor exit node. So that's generally not a good thing. It also has some January updates for recommendations about defender plans on workspaces in preview auto-provisioning log analytics agent to Azure Arc-enabled machines in preview, and then some deprecation of recommendations for classification of sensitive data in SQL databases. So just a couple of updates there. But as always, the link for that is in the description if you wanna go and read all of those details. And that was actually it. So those were all of the updates for this week. There's only those three. As always, I hope that was useful. And until next time, take care.